I have tried over 20 sunscreens to find the absolute best ones on the market. After watching this video, you no longer have an excuse to never wear sunscreen again. Okay? <laughs> hey everyone, my much awaited sunscreen review video is here. I know I've been promising this one for a while. If you're following me over on Instagram and TikTok, you see that I do sunscreen tests on my stories and I do reviews as well. And I've been telling you guys I'm gonna put a YouTube video together with all of my recommendations. And finally, it's here. <sighs> I don't know why I did this to myself. I don't know why I made the grand decision to be the one that goes around and tries every single sunscreen she possibly can. But I mean, I don't get paid for this. I should, I, I should, but I don't. So, you know, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with your friends. If you are new here, my name's Razio. I make skincare and beauty content and you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Mo. Make sure you do subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell for my weekly uploads. As we all know, sunscreen is one of the most important steps of your skincare routine. Up until recently, I wasn't wearing sunscreen every day. I was only wearing it like if I was going out, if I was going for a hike or to the beach. That didn't happen very often. So, you know, I was just going about my daily life without wearing sunscreen. And not only was I not wearing sunscreen every day, I was using glycolic acid like twice a day. That's, that's a whole other, let, let's not even talk about that. And that's why I decided to do this because I wasn't wearing it and I know a lot of other people weren't as well. And I can understand why. I used to view sunscreen as like a really extra unnecessary step that was more of a hassle rather than an essential because when I think of sunscreen, I think of something that's gloppy and greasy and smelly. And I know a lot of other people view sunscreen in the same light. Even to this day, there's a lot of horrible sunscreens on the market. That's why I took it upon myself to go and try every single sunscreen I possibly can to see if we can find ones that are good options. And thankfully, there are plenty of good options on the market at all different price points. And that's what I'm here to do today. I'm here to show you all the great options we have, especially on the Australian skincare market. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you all the sunscreens I have tried, the good and the bad, and I'm gonna start listing them from the worst that I've tried to make sure you don't waste your money on them and I'll finish off with the best ones that I have tried that are my absolute favorites. I'm not gonna talk too much about the different filters that these sunscreens have because it gets a bit scientific and I don't really have the knowledge for that. If you are interested in more of the science stuff behind UV filters, I do highly recommend checking out Lab Muffin Beauty Science YouTube page. She's very knowledgeable about all this stuff and I highly recommend you check out her channel. These are the things that I look for. It needs to be a broad spectrum sunscreen, which means it needs to protect you from UVA and UVB. It needs to be at least least SPF 30, ideally SPF 50 plus. No white cast, it needs to have a really nice texture, lightweight, not heavy or greasy at all. And also it needs to be compatible to wear with makeup. I'll also mention the different prices of all these products. And those are the main criteria that we're gonna be talking to about today. For reference, I have dry acne prone skin. I like a more moisturizing sunscreen that leaves a nice glow and finish on the skin. Not grease, glow. There is a difference between greasy skin and glowy skin. And I like a nice glow finish on my skin. And here is my little SPF library. <laughs> I'll also have video pop-ups on the side of me actually applying the sunscreens so you can have an idea of what it's like texturally and what it's like applied on the skin. So hopefully this video is very thorough and very helpful and I hope I didn't leave out anything important. If I did, please leave me a comment down below, let me know. I reply to all my comments. You can also send me a DM on Instagram and I'll definitely get back to you if you have any questions at all. Here's another thing about sunscreens. You need to be applying enough of it. And for the face, just the face, you need a quarter of a teaspoon. So all the sunscreens that I've tried, I have applied a quarter of a teaspoon because that's how much you need to be applying. If you're covering your ears, neck and chest, you need to be using even more. If it looks like I'm applying too much, I'm not. This is how much you need to be applying. That's the metric we're judging these sunscreens by. I need to be able to apply the amount I need to protect my face and it still needs to look good. It's not a matter of using less so the sunscreen looks better. No, I need to be able to use more and it still needs to look good. We're being quite harsh here, but you know what? Not really because this is exactly what sunscreen is supposed to do. <laughs> Starting from the worst sunscreen, we have this one here. This is the Institute Age Defense SPF 50 Plus. 
This one was horrible and I'm very surprised by this because I like Skinstitute. They make a lot of great products. And so obviously I had high expectations of their sunscreen and it was a disaster. It's thick, it leaves a bad white cast on the skin. I was rubbing this in for a solid minute and managed to really work that cast down but I was still left with a grey tint to my skin and you can see I'm not that dark so anyone even darker than me would have a horrible time with this sunscreen so you know absolutely don't recommend this one not even even going to talk further about this because it's just not it's not worth the time <laughs> next another incredible disappointment Cetaphil UVA UVB defense again very disappointed by this one Cetaphil is very cheap very affordable brand but their products are still quite decent you know they're simple yet effective skincare this SPF is absolutely not one of the products that I would recommend from them. Left a horrible white cast on the skin. It's so thick, it smells greasy. I mean, everything bad, literally everything you don't want in a sunscreen. Sunscreens like this are the reason that people are so hesitant to wear sunscreen because this is what they think it's gonna be like and there are still products like this on the market. So, you know, it's very disappointing. <laughs> Next we have the La Roche-Posay Anthelios Tinted Dry Touch Gel Cream. You need quite a bit of sunscreen, like I mentioned, a quarter of a teaspoon. So a quarter of a teaspoon of this foundation textured type of SPF is absolutely not the best thing to be using. Very thick. It is anti-shine, so it does dry down quite matte, which can work for oily skin types. To be honest, I'm not a fan of tinted sunscreens. I'd, I'd rather wear a sunscreen that doesn't leave any color on my face then go on with my makeup on top as I usually would. I'm not the biggest fan of tinted SPFs and this one texturally and just not not nice. It's really not great. Next we have Aven. Aven SPF 50 plus emulsion. I really wanted to like this sunscreen, but it's it's a it's a huge no-no. Leaves a horrible white cast, more of like a bluish tint on the face. Obviously, I don't think it works well for skin of color. I mean, I'm again, like, I'm not the darkest person. So if it didn't work on me, it's not going to work on anyone. Even one shade darker than me. <laughs> Texture's quite nice, I'm, I will say that. And it does have a nice smell to it. But I mean, the white cast couldn't get, couldn't get past it. Once you have a white cast on your face, the whole screen becomes worthless. That's just how it is. Texturally, it is nice, it has a nice smell, and it does dry down to a nice matte finish. So if you have oily skin and you are quite light in complexion, you might actually like this one. So there you go. <laughs> Next, we have these sunscreens from Neutrogena. You've got the Neutrogena Dry Touch, and you've also got the Neutrogena Water Boost. I'm gonna rank these two as a tie together. And I'll explain why. This one, Hydro Boost, as the name suggests, is quite hydrating, so better for those with dry skin types, and that's why I actually quite enjoyed it. No white cast, rubs into the skin nicely. I didn't notice any peeling or anything like that. Worked well with makeup as well. Also, a great price point, very affordable. The only thing with this one is if your sun, if the sunscreen gets into your eye, which can happen with sweating or you know maybe rubbing your eye or something like that, or this one stings quite a bit in the eye area. Next, we have the Neutrogena Ultra She Dry Touch Sunscreen Lotion. This one, as the name suggests, has a very dry, mattifying finish. Definitely better for oilier skin types. And because it is made for oilier skin types, this one wasn't my favorite. It was a bit scary at first because it is quite thick and I thought it was gonna end up being a mess. The white cast does go away as you rub the sunscreen in and it does dry down and leave you with a nice matte finish. Oily skin and dry skin and they're both affordable and they're both very easy to find. Woolies, Coles, Priceline, Chemist Warehouse, very affordable, $10 or less even. And you get a decent amount of it as well. So definitely a good option. I wouldn't completely rule these out. Just a few little things here and there. Next up is the Ultraviolet Lean Screen, is a mineral sunscreen. The UV filter in this one is zinc oxide, you've got 22.75%. I don't have too many physical sunscreens in my little sunscreen collection. I definitely prefer chemical sunscreens, they're just a lot more nicer to use. But if you absolutely do want a physical sunscreen, this is definitely a good option for you. It's good, but the reason I'm ranking it here and not higher in my little list is because I just have other sunscreens that I prefer to use over this one. It's not tinted, but it does come out with this tinted color and it rubs down. It is quite thick and it does have a nice matte finish, not super matte. It doesn't leave you feeling dry, but it's definitely not glowy. So I would say this one is better for more normal to oilier skin types. 
You can use this if you have dry skin. I will just make sure you have a moisturizer on underneath, but it is just a bit thick and I just prefer chemical sunscreens to physical sunscreens. Not really anything bad to say about that one, but sometimes it is just a matter of personal preference and that's why I ranked it where I ranked it. <laughs> Next, we have this one from SkinCeuticals. This is their Ultra Facial Defense SPF 50 Plus. My first issue with this one is the price. Actually, I think I should have ranked this one a little bit lower. It is only 30 mils that you get in this tube and it's $55 for 30 mils. First of all, I don't know why they've packaged so little SPF. I mean, this would finish so fast and you would just have to keep repurchasing it, which is probably what they want. Considering the price and considering the brand, I was expecting a better SPF, not gonna lie. It does, it does take a little bit of time to rub in to get rid of a bluish cast. It does have titanium dioxide in it, so I think that might be contributing to the bluish tint. So it rubs down, it does have a nice finish, uh, not too matte and not too glowy, so somewhere in between, which is okay. And I've tried it with makeup as well. It does work well with makeup. I haven't noticed it balling up or anything. Overall, good sunscreen, good user experience. But it's just a bit pricey and I mean it's SkinCeuticals so it would be weird if they had an affordable skincare product I guess. But that's my, that's my major problem with this one. Otherwise it's fine. Next up we have another very affordable option and this one is from the Cancer Council and this is their Face Stay Wear Moisturizer Matte SPF 50 Plus. This one was actually recommended to me by one of my followers on Instagram. She told me that this is the one she uses and she loves it, doesn't leave her any white cast. So I bought it based on her recommendation and it's actually quite nice. It is matte, so definitely more suitable for those that want a matte finish or maybe if you have oily skin and you don't want to be left with too much hydration from your sunscreen. Definitely nothing to complain about with this one. Great option and very affordable as well. Okay, we're halfway there. I really hope you guys stay to the end of this video because all of my favorites will be at the end and that's the best part of this video. So that's the not so great half. I mean, there were some good options there like the Neutrogena and the Cancer Council, but now we're getting to some of the better ones and these are the ones that I will keep in my collection and repurchase over and over. And when someone asks me for a sunscreen recommendation, these are the ones that I'm gonna recommend. So please stay tuned and please watch right to the end so you don't miss any of them. Next we have As Clear. We have the As Clear Day Moisturizer with SPF 30. As Clear is a brand that I've recently discovered. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you've noticed me talking about the As Clear 20% Azolake Lotion, which is amazing. The only issue I have with this is that it's SPF 30, which is fine. SPF 30 is more than fine. But I wish it was SPF 50 because SPF 50 is even better than SPF 30. Otherwise, it's perfect. It's hydrating, it's lightweight, leaves a nice finish on the skin, not greasy, not heavy, not smelly, literally nothing to complain about with this one. Sometimes we have those lazy days where we can't be bothered layering too many skincare products in the morning and you just want your one and done skincare product. It's good for those days when you're just staying home and you just wanna do a lazy skincare routine. You've got this one that basically is everything you need in the morning skincare routine in one bottle. Of course, I will have all the products I mentioned in this video linked below. There will be affiliate links, so if you do use them to make a purchase, I do make a small commission from that. It just helps to support me in my channel. If you do use them, thank you so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. Next up, we have this one from Bondi Sands Daily Moisturizing Face SPF 50 Plus Fragrance Free Water Resistant. I grabbed this one from Woolies just on a whim and it was on sale for like seven bucks seven dollars for 75 mil of sunscreen amazing that's so so amazing and i think it's permanently that price at chemist warehouse as well i really like this one it's so moisturizing and hydrating and just sinks right into the skin and leaves it with a nice glow not greasy at all doesn't have an offensive smell no white cast whatsoever doesn't ball up on the skin i've worn it with makeup it worked well with makeup as well and water resistant as well up to four hours so definitely a good one if you're heading to the beach because it's so moisturizing i think this definitely works as another two-in-one product so if you have those days where you just can't be bothered layering too many skincare products this is your one and done moisturizer and spf just overall a pleasant experience considering it was seven dollars i'm I'm so surprised by this one. I'm so happy with this one. And I will definitely continue to repurchase this one. Next up, you know this one was gonna be high up on the list and it is for very good reason. And that's the Sunsense Moisturizing Face for face and neck. If you've come from my Instagram, you already know. I've been bagging on about this one for weeks. Less than $15 for 100 mil. Amazing, no white cast, such a nice, lightweight, luxurious feeling sunscreen without the hefty price tag. 
no white cast, it's not greasy, it's moisturizing, it doesn't smell, it doesn't ball up on the skin, it does, it sits very nicely underneath makeup. Literally nothing to complain about. That's very, that's very much a common theme with the ones that we've got on top of the list here. Nothing to complain about. It's just overall a really nice product to use. I mean, really, I mean, great. Like we're entering top three territory here. And this one, this one makes the cut. It's oh, so, so pleasant, so good. It's the price point. Like I'm so happily surprised that I found so many sunscreens that are really nice to use and so, so affordable. This one's a recent discovery and I wasn't expecting this. Up until recently, I thought the Sunsense would be my top three, but this one just nudges it out of place. And that's the Bondi Sands Hydra SPF 50. Bondi Sands has really shocked me, you guys. I wasn't expecting a tanning company to have such great sunscreens. And again, this one was $11 from Chemist Warehouse. Again, I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. Moisturizing, lightweight, non-greasy, doesn't smell bad, nice with makeup, doesn't ball up, doesn't pill, nothing. Like, I just wish it came in a bigger bottle. Like it, that Bondi Sands was third place and now we are at second place. This is a sunscreen that I first started using and I've recommended this to a lot of people as well and they love it and that's because there's so much to love about them. And that's the sunscreen from La Roche-Posay. I bet you guys were wondering when La Roche-Posay was gonna make an appearance and here it is at second place. They're not the most expensive sunscreens but they're also not the cheapest so a good mid price point. I think they're priced in their 30s. Again, I'll have prices and everything up here. If you're Australian and you're not buying everything from Chemist Warehouse, what are you doing? Stop buying from Priceline, go to Chemist Warehouse. <laughs> I do have a Chemist Warehouse affiliate link down below, so you know, feel free to use it. We've got two here and I'm gonna tie them. First we have the Anthelios Ultra and this one is more suitable for, this one is more suitable for dry skin. It comes in a nice, more creamy, hydrating base. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get anything out of this. Oh, there you go. So good. Come on, like, are you serious? Perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> and then we have the Anthelios Invisible Fluid and that comes in our nice shaker bottle. This one's a very, very lightweight formula which is perfect for oilier skin types that don't want something very heavy on the skin. And I'll just show you how lightweight. I mean, it's basically water. That's how liquidy it is. And like, come on. It's, it's perfect. Sits well with makeup, doesn't ball up on the skin, non-greasy, doesn't smell, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Bondi Sands and the Sunsense are good. They're about 10 to $15. If you wanna spend a little bit more money, these are around $30 and they're, they're just great. They're perfect. I mean, nothing to say, nothing to complain about. All the ones in this top category can basically all be tied for first place. Nothing really, there's nothing really to complain about with the ones that are in the top five, but I did have to rank these. So that's why there's a ranking system because they couldn't all be first. But rest assured, they're all good. Whichever one you go for, you won't be disappointed. And it might take a little bit of trial and error because everyone's skin type is different as well and everyone has different preferences. So take the time to try different ones out and hopefully you find the one that is perfect for you. Last but not least, in first place, and I know you were waiting for this one, we have Ultraviolet. What can I say? If you have been following me on Instagram or TikTok, you already know. If perfection could be bottled into sunscreen formula, we would have these ones from Ultraviolet. Again, I can't pick one over the other. They're both perfect. <laughs> but I will say this one, very, so lightweight, so beautiful, hydrating, probably better suited for those with drier skin. That's why I've ranked them both together. They're both perfect. One is just better for one skin type than the other. This one I say would be suitable more for those with drier skin. Someone that likes a more hydrating, more glowy finish to their sunscreen. Just so you can see how liquidy it is. That, I mean, it comes in a dropper, so what? One swipe and it's gone, like perfect. Has a nice rose, has a nice rose smell as well. Not fragrance free if that's something you need to take into consideration. But if you don't mind fragrance in your sunscreen and you want something just beautiful, go for this one. 
priced at $47. It is one of the more expensive ones that I have talked about today, but you know what, for good reason. But as I've demonstrated, you absolutely don't need to spend a lot on sunscreen, but if you do, the option's there. And lastly, we have the Supreme screen. This one is just perfect. It's beautiful. It looks like a tinted sunscreen, but it isn't. It goes on transparent and beautiful. And again, you saw that, we all saw that. Nice satin finish, so not matte, not glowy. Kind of feels like a primer on the skin. So if you really want a cosmetically elegant type of sunscreen that will sit nicely under makeup and basically serve the purpose of both a primer and a sunscreen, I mean, go for this one. And because it's definitely one of the best, if not the best sunscreen, I enjoy using it every single time and I don't want to finish it ever. <laughs> I could just get another one, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> but that's that. We just went through, I think around 20 sunscreens and I've tried so many. If after watching this video, you still can't find a sunscreen that you like, I can't help you. I don't think anyone can. <laughs> But if you did watch this video and if you are inclined to now go and find your dream sunscreen, I'm so glad, I'm so happy I could help. Please do let me know in the comments down below your sunscreen of choice is or if there's any other sunscreens that you might want me to look into. Um, I'd love to know your feedback on this video. Did you enjoy this? Was it too overwhelming? Did it help? All of that kind of stuff. I think I've blabbed on long enough today. That's all from me. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't go anywhere. Check out my last video and... I'll see you in the next one.